he looks up and it's the face of Christ. Whoa. Doesn't say anything. And I look at the other two guys with me and we just looked at each other and we were just like, what are we seeing? What is your most profound spiritual experience while in Argentina? I have not told this one to very many people at all. Probably, I don't even know if my kids will know it. So when they hear it, they'll, they'll, they'll. We were, um, we, there was three of us. I actually, normally it's just two of you, but we happen to be three of us at that point. I had one guy from Argentina and one guy from America. They were new. And so I was training them. And we'd had a rough day. Everything had gone wrong that day. Like the appointments had all been canceled. And, and so we're just like, let's just go back to the pension, which is the apartment. Let's go back to the pension and uh, let's just call it, uh, call it a day. And as we were kind of, we cross this road, we see this old man, just old and dirty and clothes are all tattered, long hair, head down, beard, just old bum, like a, just what you would think is a bum. So he's crossing the road and we get to the other side and we stop and we all three look at each other and we're like, oh, do we just go home or should we turn around and help this guy? What should we do? And so finally we, uh, we said, let's just go help this guy. So by the time we crossed back across the street, he was trying to get up over the curb and he started to fall. And my, we got there just in time and we catch him. And so we couldn't, we kept asking him, where are you going? And he was just kind of mumbling. So there was a, for about 30, 40, maybe 30 yards away, there was a kiosk, which is where it's a little store in the side of a building, somebody's house where they sell milk and candy and food. And so we start walking towards the kiosk. And it literally takes us 30 minutes or more to walk 30 yards because this guy can't walk. He's just shuffling along. And so by the time we get to this kiosk, the sun has gone down. And now we're standing under this kiosk, much like we are in this room, and there's a light above us. And um, the guy, I had none of us had seen the guy's face. And so we asked the kiosk guy, we're like, who is this guy? He says, oh, he lives right over there, just a couple doors down at that house. And he said, we said, well, what does he usually get here? And they said, he gets milk and candles. And we said, okay, well, give us the milk and the candles. So we're standing there and he looks up and it's the face of Christ. Whoa. Clean. clear, doesn't say anything. And I look at the other two guys with me and we just looked at each other and we were just like, what are we seeing? He put his head back down and we never saw his face again. We took him, we got his candle, we got his milk and we're freaked out at this point because we're just thinking, well, what did we just go through? I mean, he just locked eyes with me, just looked up, looked at me like this, and looked back down. So we walked this guy over, we put him in this little, um, we walked through this gate, and in this room was a little storage closet. And this is where he lives. It was no bigger than, he had a chair in the storage closet, a bunch of junk behind him. He had a table, with old candles, and we put his milk on his can the table and his candles. And on the way there, he's like, who are you? And we just said, we're just angels from our Lord taking you home. So two days later, we show back up. We're knocking on the door, nothing. We ask these kids out playing. We're like, hey, where's the guy that lives here? And they said, oh, he died two nights ago. How many days had passed? Two days, two days. So we had gone, that was like a Monday night. Wednesday, we went by his house and he had died Monday night. And uh, to this day, if I see those two missionaries, when I, every now and then I talk to one of those guys and we'll always say, do you remember that old guy? Wow. Wow. And what it was for me is it taught you a lesson that um, Christ is in the things that you least expect. 
God is in the things that you least inspect. If you judge a book by its cover, if you see it for the dirtiness and the, the bum and the this and that, um, you miss the opportunities. You miss where Christ truly is. And for us, in that moment, you realize, I'm going to do, I'm going to be treat everybody the same because you never know who you're talking to. You never know who it is. That's a great lesson, man. And you can see why I don't tell the story very often. <laughs>